Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. We are now in lesson 9, Transactions and Data Manipulation Language, DML, part 1. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to define the terms commit, rollback and save point as they relate to data transaction, list three advantages of commit, rollback and save point statements, and explain why it is important from a business perspective to be able to control the flow of transaction processing. Transactions are a fundamental concept of all database systems. Transactions allow users to make changes to data and then decide whether to save or discard the work. Database transactions bundle multiple steps into one logical unit of work. A transaction consists of one of the following DML statements which constitute one consistent change to the data The DML statements include insert, update, delete and merge One DDL statement such as create, alter, drop, rename or truncate And one DCL statement such as grant or revoke This is an analogy of transaction Suppose a customer wants to withdraw and transfer money from his account and deposit it into another customer's account at a different branch. There are several separate steps involved to accomplish this rather simple operation. Both bank branches want to be assured that either all steps in the transaction happen or none of them happen and if the system crashes, the transaction is not left partially complete. Grouping the withdrawal and deposit steps into one transaction provides this guarantee. A transaction either happens completely or not at all. Transactions are controlled using the following statements. The first one is commit. It represents the point in time where the user has made all the changes he wants to have logically grouped together and because no mistakes have been made, the user is ready to save the work. When a commit statement is issued, the current transaction ends making all pending changes permanent in the database. Next is rollback. It enables the user to discard changes made to the database. When a rollback statement is issued, all pending changes are discarded. Next one is save point. It creates a marker in a transaction which divides the transaction into smaller pieces. You can think save point as the checkpoint. Last one is rollback to save point. It allows the user to roll back the current transaction to specified save point. If an error was made, the user can issue a rollback to save point statement discarding only those changes made after the save point was established. A transaction begins with the first DML statement, such as insert, update, delete or merge. And a transaction ends when one of the following occurs. The first one is a commit or rollback statement is issued. A DDL, create, author, drop, rename or truncate statement is issued. A DCL statement is issued, such as grant or revoke. And a user exits normally from the Oracle Database Utility, causing the current transaction to be implicitly committed. After one transaction ends, the next executable SQL statement automatically starts the next transaction. A DDL statement or a DCL statement is automatically committed and therefore implicitly ends a transaction. Every data change made during a transaction is temporary until the transaction is committed. To allow multiple users to access the database at the same time, database systems employ an automatic implementation called read consistency. Read consistency guarantees a consistent view of the data by all users at all times. Readers do not view data that is in the process of being changed. Writers are ensured that the changes to the database are done in a consistent way. Changes made by one writer do not destroy or conflict with changes another writer is making. A read consistency ensures that on the same data, readers do not wait for writers, writers do not wait for readers, and writers wait for writers. For example, there is one user, Aiman, who wants to update city's address in the database. 
at the same time, we have another user, Ada, who is trying to read Siti's address in a database. Aiman is the writer in the system, while Ada is the reader in the, in the database system. How the Oracle server control this concurrent user are? Since writer has priority over the reader in database system, when Aiman is trying to update the data, he is accessing the real database. But Aiman only wants to update one data out of a lot of data in the database. Oracle will mark the portion of records that Aiman wants to change and snapshot it and writes it to an undo segment data. So, when Ada, who is the reader in the system, wants to read the data, the data is, that is actually read by Ada is inside the undo segment as the data changes made by Aiman in the real database cannot be seen by other user unless Aiman commit its transaction. Before changes are committed to the database, only the user who is changing the data sees the changes. Everyone else sees the snapshot in the undo segment. This guarantees that readers of the data see consistent data that is not currently undergoing change. Basically, when a DML statement is committed, the change made to the database becomes visible to anyone executing a select statement. If the transaction is rolled back, the changes are undone. The original or the older version of the data in the undo statement is written back to the table. All users see the database as it existed before the transaction began. Commit, rollback and save point are known as transaction control language or TCL. So these are the advantages of using this commit and rollback statement, which you can ensure the data consistency, you can preview data changes before making the changes permanent, and group logically related operations. In the transaction shown on the screen, after the transaction started, a delete statement was issued and then save point A was established. This save point acts like a marker that will allow the user to roll back any subsequent changes made in the data back to the state of the data as it existed at this point. In the example, following save point A, the user issues an insert and update statements, then establishes another rollback marker at save point B. If for some reason the user does not want this insert and update statements to occur, the user can issue a rollback to save point A statement. Means after the save point A, everything was discarded. But if only the grey insert here that is wrong, what you can do is you can roll back to save point B. But if you think all of the changes that you have made is wrong, what you can do is you can just issue rollback without the save point. Means if you do the rollback, the entire transaction is ended and all pending data changes are discarded. Automatic commit or data changes occurs under the following circumstances. The first one, a DDL statement is issued, a DCL statement is issued, a user exits normally from the Oracle database utility causing the current transaction to be implicitly committed or explicitly issuing commit or rollback statements. Automatic rollback occurs under an abnormal termination of the Oracle database utility or when a system failure occurs. This prevents any errors in the data from causing unwanted changes to the underlying tables. The integrity of the data is therefore protected. Let's take a look on log operation in Oracle. It is important to prevent data from being changed by more than one user at a time. Oracle uses logs that prevent destructive interaction between transactions assessing the same resource, either a user object such as tables or rows, or a system object that is not visible to users such as shared data structures and data dictionary rows. 
Oracle locking is performed automatically and requires no user action. Implicit locking occurs for SQL statements as necessary depending on the action requested. Implicit locking occurs for all SQL statements except for select. The user can also lock data manually, which we call as explicit locking. When a commit or rollback statement is issued, logs on the affected rows are released. If you want to update or delete certain data, please select the data first before you can proceed. At the end of the select statement, please issue for update clause so that Oracle Server will know that the selected rows from your select statement only will be locked. This is to make sure that no one else can update or delete the records your query is returning while you are working on those records. As soon as your query is executed, the database will automatically issue exclusive row level logs on all rows written by your select statement, which will be held until you issue a commit or rollback command. Let's take a look at this example. Select employee ID, salary, department name from employees join departments using department ID where job ID equals to SD Clark and location ID equals to 1500. Then you add four update order by employee ID. So if you take a look here, you have the four update clause means you want to log the data that you are selecting now. What does it mean here? From 107 employees, only 20 employees are locked because this SQL returns 20 rows of results. So means the 20 employees, the 20 rows that you are getting from this select statement are locked. So this record can only be changed by the log holder. The other employees can be changed by any database users as long as it is not locked. So after the data have been logged, the user who logs the data can update or delete the data without any problems. Once the user done, if the changes are correct, he or she can commit to make changes permanent. But if the changes are wrong, he or she can roll back to go back to the previous stable state of the data. Once user commit or roll back, the log is released. Another user who wants to use the data now can start locking that particular data. So I guess that's all for now. See you again in the next part. Thank you.